over here, I think I already found my graph. It's uh, this, exactly how I made it. It could actually start from here, right? And it could also be this, but acceleration were all positive values and these are all positive gradients. Over here is all negative gradients until zero, right? So acceleration values were positive, right? How do I know they were positive? Brilliant question. You ask a very beautiful question. Acceleration was denoted by this. It was greater than, it was higher than this value, right? It was on the positive side. So it was, these are all positive values until it hits zero. Okay. And it's gradually increasing, it's changing. You notice that acceleration has, does not have one value. It's a high value. Then it has a lower value, then a lower value, then a lower value. Values, right? Not gradient. Gradient is constant, but we don't, we're not looking at the gradient of this. Over here, the acceleration is constant. So these straight curves are out. They're talking about the wrong thing. They mean, they're trying to highlight if the acceleration was constant. Over here, the acceleration is really high because the gradient is really high. Then it's, you know, it's, it's unsteeping, I guess, steeping down and it goes flat. Flattening down, then it goes flat. Now, correct answer is R. A satellite is orbiting the Earth in circular orbit. Which two quantities are always in the same direction as each other? The acceleration of the satellite and the displacement of the satellite. The displacement, if you think about it, well, the acceleration of the satellite compared to the planet, let's get some realism in here. Right, planet with realism. Right? So the displacement is going, where will this be in one minute? Over here. So this is the displacement, right, of the satellite. Or if you wait longer, it'll, you know, it's revolving. So over time, it's just going to be zero, right? Because it if it starts, if it does one complete revolution, it's going to be zero. The acceleration is always pointing towards the center, right? So wherever it is, it's just pointing towards the center. And they're not aligned. They're actually perpendicular at all times, I'd argue. The acceleration of the satellite and the velocity of the satellite, velocity will also be horizontal, right? And that's how displacement is, and that's the rate of change of displacement. Okay. The resultant force on the satellite and the acceleration of the satellite Force and acceleration go hand in hand wherever the force is, the resultant forces, acceleration. They're essentially the same vector. The only difference is one is multiplied by mass. The resultant force of the satellite and the velocity, not the velocity. C is our correct answer. A satellite is in circular orbit around a planet, which statement is correct? Its acceleration is constant in direction, but not in size. Uh, the other way around, it's gonna be always the same acceleration towards the center of the planet, but the direction keeps changing because it's always at the center of the planet. Try saying that out loud. The direction is always changing because it's always towards the center of the planet. Direction is always changing because it's pointing at the same thing, kind of mind bugger. Its acceleration is constant in size, but not in direction. That's true. That's what I just argued. Its gravitational potential energy varies and it stays constant because it's at the same height relative to that of Earth, right? So its velocity is constant. Velocity is also a vector and it keeps changing. Wherever it is, it's tangential to its path, right? So if the satellite is here it's going to be like this if the satellite is here it's going to be like this right so the correct answer is b an astronaut travels in the space international space station which really describes his mass and weight compared to the size of earth with their sizes on earth okay the mass is going to be the same even though they're bouncing the mass does not change mass is amount of substance right like He's not less of a man if he's in space, you know? You can argue that. You're not less of a person, right? So that's always going to be the same. Normally, unless nuclear reactions, these things don't really change. The weight 
is going to be different because the weight is how much that mass is being pulled by something. So the weight, weight, the closer you are to the planet, the heavier you are relative to that planet, I guess. Okay, so the correct answer is C. A uniform beam is pivoted at its center. The beam is balanced by three ways in the position shown. Okay, there's one weight, there's this weight, and there's this weight. What is the length D? I need some more room for calculation, but let's try it out. Okay, this is moment caused by A. This means block A, block B, block C, right? So there's moment that is being, is being caused by A, moment being caused by B, moment being caused by C, right? And moment being caused by A is counterclockwise. I like making the arrow just because it looks nicer. This is going to be clockwise because it's on the right. This mass alone is pushing it like that. So this is going to be clockwise. This is also clockwise, right? So the moment A, the moment A is being counterbalanced by the moment B plus the moment caused by the block C. Is that true? I hope it, I think it's making complete sense. Sense. Why do I talk like that? You have moment A caused by a force that is 300 times the distance, which is 0 0.4 meters away. Moment B is caused by an unknown force. And, oh, sorry, it's not an unknown force. My bad. It's 350 newtons at an unknown position d and moment c is caused by a hundred newtons which is at 0 0.5 let's write that here 0 0.5 meters away half a meter away so to balance it out to balance it out 300 times 4 i need the aid of this space deck calculator 0 0.4 times 300 120 350d I'll just write that down 350d plus this is going to be 50 so subtracting that you yeah, have 50 60 70 70 left so d will equal to 70 divided by 350, which is seven over 35, that's one over five, which is 0 0.2, look at that. Is it? I'll double check, seven divided by 35 is 0 0.2 meters. Yay. Answer is A. If this blog Christian B is exactly 0 0.2 meter away, this entire thing, will be balanced. So the answer is A. Or it would be, because I marked it wrong, it's actually C, because I got confused. I noticed the extra zero over here, it's actually C. A fixed mass of gas undergoes a change of volume at constant temperature. Which diagram shows the relationship between the volume and the pressure of the gas? Now, volume and the pressure of gas. So, the product of pressure of a gas and the volume is actually a constant, right? So pressure is actually, you know, inversely proportional to volume. And this graph, when you try to draw it, is simply trying to say high pressure will give you low volume low pressure will give you high volume but it's not as smooth so it's gonna look like this right answer is d the the, the, the 
Pido gram shows a clinical thermometer. How does the diagram show that this is a sensitive thermometer? Because it's uh, scaled a lot. It has a range of seven. Well, that doesn't mean it's sensitive. It has a range. Um, the equal distances between C marked on the scale that is only because the mercury expands equally. There is a constriction in the tube at X, so that prevents the flow back of mercury once it's expanded. There is large distance between each centigrade mark. Yeah, so I know, I can figure out exactly, like it's so spread out, there's large dis distances, I can have a good idea. Like if the thermometer was here, I'd be like, it's not 36.5, it's 36.3 maybe, you know, sorry, 36 point, yeah, 36.3 maybe. Right, you could figure it out. Okay. Ask all thanks to the great distance between them. Answer is D.